Hello and welcome to The Reluctant Chef. My name is Bob. You know, here in the United States, we're approaching Thanksgiving, that wonderful holiday when we gather our family and friends together and give thanks for our many blessings and stuff ourselves at the dining table. Imagine that this year you have been tasked to roast the family's Thanksgiving turkey. If you will use the reluctant chef method, it's so straightforward, it's so simple, and you'll be so happy with the way the turkey comes out. First thing is to make sure that uh, there's room to put the turkey in the oven when the time comes. Uh, so you notice I've put, uh, I've taken out all the racks except one and I've put it low down in the, in the oven. The other thing I want to do is go ahead and preheat the oven to 325 degrees. Now, like I do in all of these uh, Reluctant Chef videos, I have my mise en place in place here. Everything I'm going to need is laid out where I'm going to need it. Obviously, we've got our turkey here. I've got some uh, instructions, which I'll explain in a minute. A plastic bag to put the spare parts in, roasting pan, uh, five or six paper towels, roughly a quarter cup of olive oil that I'm going to brush all over the turkey little salt, little pepper, uh, some tin foil to make a tent to cover the turkey with. And then over here next to the oven where I'm going to need them, I've got my pot holders handy and my turkey baster. I have my meat thermometer at hand so I can check and make sure the turkey is done when I think it is. And then of course a platter to serve the turkey on. Now, there are a couple of things that I do want to share with you about turkeys. Um, if you get a fresh turkey, of course, all you have to do is just keep it in the refrigerator until you're ready to prepare it and roast it. Uh, if you have a frozen turkey, which this one was, then you really have to plan ahead, and you have to plan ahead a few days. The rule of thumb is five hours of thawing for every pound of turkey. When you're unwrapping the turkey, keep your hands on the tag that tells you how much it weighs and snip off of the wrapping a table that tells you how long this turkey needs to roast based on its weight. The total roasting time, according to this table, which I'm sure won't fail, is uh, about three and a quarter hours. Now, turkeys come packed with excess parts. There would be a neck and some uh, other innards of the turkey that we want to be sure to remove before we roast the turkey. Some people like to roast those. Some people chop them up and put them in dressing. Um, so I'm going to put those in the fridge for now. I'm actually going to go in one more time and just make absolutely sure that there are no other loose parts in there because I, I really don't want them in there. The next step is actually to rinse the turkey inside and out, not terribly thoroughly, just a light rinsing. So run some lukewarm water over it. The one thing I would urge you to do if you are using a foil roasting pan is to place it in a cookie sheet or, yeah, just a, a cookie sheet. Uh, I use this old uh, one for, for utility purposes. Um, and that gives you some stability when you're moving it around into the oven and out of the oven and whatnot. Again, it's roasting pan. And this is where the uh, five or six paper towels that I have handy come into play because what I want to do is just pat some of the excess water off the outside. And different brands of turkeys are done different ways. Some will have a, a little sort of figure eight shaped plastic clip that holds the ends of the, the drumsticks together. This particular brand, they have the skin from the top side pulled around and holding the ends of the drumsticks together. Regardless of how they're anchored, you want to leave that that way so that the drumsticks don't splay out uh, while it's roasting. All right, so now what I want to do is just get a bit of olive oil on all of the exposed parts. Now, just going to sprinkle couple pinches of salt, again, all the way around the exposed part of the turkey. Maybe I'll do a third pinch. And now I'm going to add a little pepper seasoning to it. 
Uh, you can use ground pepper if you want to and have some handy. I just use pepper out of a can, works just fine. But I want to give it a good thorough sprinkling. Some people like to add a little more seasoning. You can add onion powder, garlic powder, tarragon, parsley flakes, thyme, basil, paprika, any combination of those. Uh, I find that the salt and pepper gives it just, just the right amount of seasoning. So now there's only one step left before we put the turkey in the oven, and that is to build a tent over the turkey. And that's what this tin foil is for. Now what I do is uh, I cut off a piece of tin foil that I measure against the pan and about, I don't know, seven or eight inches longer than the pan, so I have some excess. Uh, because what I'm going to do is try to mound it up above the turkey so that the heat can circulate underneath and actually cook the turkey. Scrunch the foil down into the rim of the pan and hope that it holds, which it usually does. There we go. And then I'll do the same thing and I'll push it up so it mounds up above the top of the turkey. And then I'll try to get that. There we go, not bad. Then, <laughs> Sometimes this works. I kind of pinch this. There, it kind of rounds it out across the top. Um, because if possible, you don't want the foil to touch the turkey. Um, if it does, it's not the end of the world. But that's the ideal that you're aiming for. And by golly, that worked pretty well. Okay, so now it's ready to go into the oven. And it's going to have to roast for about two and a quarter hours until it's uh, an hour short of being done. At about an hour before it should be finished, what I want to do is take the tent off and start basting it so I get that nice golden crispy skin on the uh, turkey. And now since the critical thing at this stage uh, is not only for it to finish roasting, but we want it to, to get that nice crispy brown on top. So in fact what I'm going to do is raise the temperature to 425 Fahrenheit. I'm going to let it roast for about 15 minutes before I baste again. And I do want to do that gently so I don't squirt broth all over the inside of the oven. Now, of course, if you don't have a turkey baster handy, you can always use a long-handled spoon and just scoop the broth up and, and pour it on top. We'll give it another 15 minutes. All right, now, at, at this point, actually, I'm going to turn it around in the oven. Uh, just to make sure that it gets sort of evenly browned. So let me give that side a good basting. Hey, right, I'll give it another 15 minutes. Okay, let's see now what, what we're aiming for now. It's just to get it that nice golden brown, crispy on the breast, and we're there. Look at that. Now, um, I, I do need to mention um, that I actually ended up roasting this about four hours, which was a little longer than the estimated time on that table that we looked at. Um, I'm quite sure it's done. What I really wanted was to give it a little extra time to get that nice golden brown all over it. You know, some brands of turkeys, uh, you'll find that they come with uh, an embedded thermometer in the breast. Uh, it's a little, you'll see a little white tab and it pops up when the interior temperature reaches uh, 165 degrees. This one doesn't. So I am going to use the meat thermometer, which I will press the button to reset. And then what I'm going to do is slide it into the breast meat. Good little distance in there, but what I don't want to do is hit the bone. And then we'll wait and see what the temperature comes to. So there we are, actually a little over 165. So what I'm going to do is just loosely put the aluminum foil back on top and just leave it alone for 30, 35 minutes or so. Uh, and there are a couple reasons why we do that. One is because as it rests, the meat firms up a bit, so it's easier to get nice, clean slices uh, of the turkey when it's time to do that. And the other is that it reabsorbs some of the juices, so we get a nice, juicy uh, slice of turkey. 
All right. There we have it. Beautifully golden brown, beautifully garnished. It's just ready for the dining table. It just looks wonderful and delicious and inviting. We would appreciate it if you would let us know how your Thanksgiving turkey turns out. And with that, I leave you with my best wishes for a happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>